Hello friends of the Electrified Charging Fund and welcome to Electrified Speicher, your channel all around Skoda's e-mobility. It's time to hit the test track again. No, not with that Model Y there in the background, but with the Skoda LROC 85. And I'm pretty sure that now where there are new LROC videos on my channel, I get quite a new audience, which is only interested in the LROC, not in the ENYAQ. Therefore, I will explain my test course, the conditions I'm driving in and the rules which I apply. If you are a veteran to this channel and you know every kilometer of that test track, just skip those chapters. We have a wintry day. Yes, the sun is shining, but I've started very early this morning and we had minus two degrees Celsius here and I'm pretty sure we will hit minus 10 degrees when we are going into the mountains. So a pretty good cold winter day, not that cold, but perfect conditions for the test of the consumption of this car on this course. And now let's go. Time to hit the road. Due to the holiday season and that we have a sunny week and everybody want to go skiing. And since we have to drive past some ski resource, it's better uh, to go early to not run into any traffic jams. Overnight it went cold here. You can see it, it's minus two degrees and it will get much colder when we approach the mountains. And you can see it over there, that Tesla here is completely frozen. For those who do not know my test drive, as I never have done it with an L Rock, and maybe you never saw my ENYAQ videos, this is it. We start here, then we are going highway to Landquart. From there up to Davos is national road or country road, mainly 80. And up to Davos here, the last part, is about a thousand meters climb. Then going through Davos is city drive, as going through Thuzis is also city drive, and here in my hometown also. Then we drive down here, uh, to choose this, this is again country road and a descent. So we will recuperate, regenerate a lot. From Tuzis to Coor, this is highway with 100 and 120. And the last step from Coor back to my hometown is highway again. 158 kilometers to drive. And this is perfect because we have everything you experience in normal driving. If we again look at the cockpit, we see 79% SOC, state of charge, and 296 kilometers. And this means the car already calculated with the route. I had way over 300 kilometers without the route planning. This is because the car takes into account the driving conditions and the uh, ascent up to Davos and the descent and stuff like this. But what is more interesting is the estimations of the state of charge of the battery. Let me show you. Here we go. These are the estimations. And the car thinks in Davos we will be with 53%. In Tuzis with 48%. There you can see it. It's a long distance yet we are going down so it thinks we will regenerate some. And 35% when we are back home. And we will check at each destination if we make it with that SOC or if that SOC varies much. And now just a brief explanation on how I am driving this car. First off, I'm driving in mode B or D. I can choose however I want and I will use the assistant systems. This is not an efficiency drive, so I don't try to get the last bit of energy saved. Then we will have the heating on with 21 degrees, which I like. I will also activate steering wheel heating or seat heating if I needed it. Music is shut down so I can record whenever I want and don't run into copyright issues. And of course we have winter tires, the ones which come X works with this car on this car. And now let's hit the road. If you know, ask yourself, what is this LROC for a specific model? Well, here is the official sign from the dealer. This is a chipped car which you can buy. It's their presentation car for the customer which can you can borrow to test it. You see it's an LROC 85 in the color of graphite gray with loft interior. The additional equipment is not that much. You see it down there. In German, it's mehr Ausstattungen. You see you have the tow bar, you have some changed wheels, the Regulus ones. You have the transport package, which I personally always highly recommend to take. And you have a package called eCharlie. And if you've never heard of this, this is for the market entry models. This is a special package and 
I would say it's between plus and advanced, somewhere in between there. If you know how Skoda names their packages, they start with clever, then plus, then uh, advanced, and then max. That might vary in your market because uh, they name it like they want. Don't ask me. You see the Swiss prices here in Swiss francs. Also note that there is the heat pump in the standard equipment because in Switzerland, Skoda has the heat pump in the standard equipment, therefore the base price is a bit higher. I have reached the first stop over in Davos and there you have it. It's 55% SOC state of charge and 30.7, well it was 30.6 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers to come here driven 60 kilometers. And remember, the system estimated 53% SOC, we have 55%. That is really good. It is better to have a pessimistic estimation and then have a bit more in the battery than otherwise around. And this is really easy explainable. I would say it's due to driving the pass up to Davos. There was a lot of traffic and instead of going 60 to 80, I was only able to drive 40 to 50, which basically means I am slower, so I have less consumption. But those 2%, that doesn't matter. And up here in Davos, keep in mind, it is over 1000 uh, meters in altitude to climb to come here. Hence that high consumption. Don't get irritated by that. This is normal if you go uphill. And we will see now how this consumption will decline when we continue our drive to Tuzis, because if there is not so much traffic, and I hope there isn't, the next part of the journey is a lot of letting roll and recuperation regeneration, which is awesome because it's fun, really, it is fun. Therefore, we can see other numbers. I even managed to drive from the Vos to Tuzis without any loss of SOC with my ENIAC. By the way, if you're interested in that, you will find a lot of videos all with the ENIAC on that specific test drive. Of course, the estimations now got corrected. If you now look at Tuzis, it's 52%, not 48 anymore. And if we look at home, we are not at 35%, we are at 39% right now. And this is of course good, because the route planner will adjust the estimations based on how you're driving and how your average consumption is. This is not a static calculation which uh, cramps itself to the numbers. It will always re-estimate and recalculate based on your driving style and on the conditions. And that is a really good thing. And there you have it, 52% when we are now here in Tuzis with an average consumption close to 20 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers. And yes, that's exactly what our route planner had estimated. Plus or minus 1% could happen, but it was very predictable on that part of this journey of this course because you are driving downhill a lot and regeneration kicks in. It shows the sheer power of regeneration in an electric car. It's so fun to drive that part of this course. And I was driving at the speed limits, don't get me wrong, I'm not a traffic obstacle. Neither I am when I'm driving on an efficient drive where I try to optimize all these settings. You'll find the videos here on the channel. But maybe since we are now here in winter, you might ask, what about the temperatures and the battery? Could, is there something you could do? Well, I'm measuring the battery temperature. You see it up here, six degrees Celsius is what the battery temperature is. And I did a video with my ENIAC on exactly the same track where I activated preheating, not for charging, but for driving. The results are pretty interesting and they apply to the LROC as well because it's the same technology beneath. So you could do the same I did there with your LROC. So watch that video. Have a quick look at the estimation here, it's 39%. What should have changed? Because we are here with the estimated SOC from the Vos, so nothing will happen. And I'm pretty sure we will hit that when we are back home. And that is what I do right now. Let's head back home. The results are in because we are back. 39% SOC as estimated by the system and 19.5 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers. It was 19.4 when I started recording the German part. And to be honest, I have expected such results. They are good. That was a pleasure journey. That was a nice ride with the Skoda Elrak. Let's see what the data says. If you know my ENIAC videos, you know that I am complaining about hand recognition. 
And the hand recognition in my software version 4.1 ENIAC is really, really strict. Maybe you think now, what, hand recognition? Yes, the steering wheel in your LROC or in your ENIAC will check if your hands are on that steering wheel. Why? Well, you've got travel assist and travel assist combines lane assist, which keeps you on the lane and the adaptive cruise control, which keeps distance and speed. And you could get the feeling that you're driving autonomous, yet you are not because well, this car is not an autonomous car. And therefore you have to have your hands on the steering wheel. How do you check that? Yes, you build in some hand recognition and that is built in uh, in the steering wheel. We don't go into the technical details of the hand recognition. That's a different story in a different video. But now you know that you have to keep them on the steering wheel. But, and that is the important part, let's talk about hand recognition in the LROC because this is a whole different story. I really enjoyed that. By the way, you see here my charging test uh, from 10 to 80, which comes uh, in, a, in the near future on my channel. So let's talk back to the hand recognition. In my ENIAC, I have to put them this when I'm driving over 100 kilometers an hour, 10 o'clock and two o'clock. And if I don't do this, the hand recognition will complain. Yet this is not the most comfortable position when you have long distance drivings. So maybe you want to put them in other ways and this gets really hard in the ENIAC. But here with software version 5.4 and I really hope it has to do with the software because then there is hope that it gets better in my ENIAC. You can put them like this. This is one of my favorite positions, this one here. And the system didn't complain. You could even put them here. The system didn't complain. You could put them like this or up like here or here or whatever you prefer and it works. What you cannot do is something like this. This is not a good position and the car will mourn about it or driving just with two fingers. This does not uh, work either, but it's way better than it ever was. And I'm really glad that if you start out with an LROC, we'll never make the experience of the hand recognition it is in current ENIACs with software version 4. One thing that always astonished me when it comes to electric driving and especially driving so that the Skoda range of electric cars is their turn radius. Yes, all electric cars have small turn radiuses, but now that I had my hands on a rear wheel drive uh, LROC 85, Wow, that is really tight compared especially to my RS model or my ATX I had, which are both all-wheel drive models. And you really notice when there's no engine on the front axle, how much more you have on maneuver space. So you get really tight, really close. That, that's amazing. You can circle through <laughs> nearly everything. Small, narrow streets, whatever obstacle is thrown at you, you can manage that. Um, I, since this is a driving test, I want to address this. Some of you asked me on a regular basis, what about the turn radius? Is it really that small? Yes, it is. Even with the all-wheel drive models like the RS over there. But when it comes to the rear wheel drive version, wow, that is really, really cool. And a big advantage, by the way, if you're not going all-wheel drive. Time to sum everything up and to look a bit more into the details of the driving. If you're a first timer on this channel, you might not know that we are often digging deep into technology and how things work under the hood. If you're not interested in that, I can understand that. Yet in this part, you can also extract some very good information if you are a first time EV driver or a first time Skoda LROC driver. Try it out and have a look if this is beneficial for you or not. And the second thing, if you compare consumption of cars with each other, please look when these values were measured. It is not in any sense helpful to compare a perfect summer value with a rather bad winter value. This is simply not the truth. So you need to compare same values under same conditions, especially with an EV. And now let's look at the values. 19.4 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers with the LROC is a good value, especially on that test track on that day with these conditions. What do I mean with this? Temperature has a huge influence on consumption because if the battery is cold, the inner resistance rises, hence you have more losses. At the time where I did the video with the LROC, 
we had zero till minus eight degrees Celsius outside and thus the battery was at six up to 10 degrees Celsius. This is important to know if we now do the comparison with my ENIAC winter test on the same track because there we've got 21.3 kilowatt hours 100 kilometers consumption. My ENIAC also is an all-wheel drive that could lead to higher consumption per se. Yet the conditions I drove were completely colder. Outside it was minus 4 to minus 20 degrees with the battery had minus 1 up to plus 1 degrees Celsius. Therefore the higher consumption. You cannot per se say the ENIAC has a higher consumption than the LROC. I would rather say they are under the same conditions on par. Now let's have a look at a different value because some of you ask me could the weight of the cars make a difference when it comes to regeneration. So when you get the energy back from driving when you brake. My test LROC has a weight of 2188 kilograms compared to my ENIAC which had a weight of 2365 kilograms. Let's say it's a difference of 200 kilograms. I measured the recuperation or regeneration I do this, if you do not know how I do this, with an OBD adapter which I plug into the service port of the car so I get internal data in an app. If you're interested in that, you'll find a video here on the channel. Therefore, I know how much energy was charged back into the battery while driving. This is the regeneration. With the ENIAC, on one test drive I had 4.3 kilowatt hours, on another test drive under nearly the same conditions 5.0 kilowatt hours. The LROC made 5.1 kilowatt hours, so it's pretty comparable that the weight and the weight did not take into account much. Also, it depends on how you are driving. It's easy to get a couple of watt hours more or less if you brake less or how you drive. So, and now that we are already deep into the data, I measure the total consumption. So everything that got discharged from the battery and everything that got charged back. And when we look at those data, you can see that the total consumption is 35.3 kilowatt hours for the complete drive. If you now do the math with 158 kilometers, you come to the point where you think, well, why is consumption 19.4 in the board computer? When I do the math, it's 22.3 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometer. And you are right. But now we can talk about regeneration again because 5.1 kilowatt hours got charged back in the battery. That does not affect the total discharge because we dis discharged it but we need to take that into account. And if you now do the math, you have 35.3 minus 5.1, so 30.2 kilowatt hours spent. If you do the math again with 158 kilometers, you see that it is 19.1 kilowatt hours 100 kilometer. Is the board computer lying? No, of course not. The difference between 19.1 and 19.4 kilowatt hours 100 kilometer is just 500 watt hours. This is so less, this could be to temperature differences. Uh, this really does not matter here at all. More important, if you do look at the data, 5.1 kilowatt hours of 35.3 kilowatt hours means we have regenerated 14.5% of the total energy invested for the complete drive. This is a good value. Don't mistake this with the efficiency of recuperation itself. Recuperating or regenerating energy is about 80% efficient. So what you take from movement back with electricity into your battery. Yet the car is made for driving, not for charging. Therefore, if you spend the energy again, you take into account again the losses and then you can say one single regeneration is about 60% efficient. But you do not regenerate over the whole course. You only do it when it's necessary. So 14.5% over the whole course is a really, really good value. And if you think that this video was helpful for you and you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Consider to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed so you do not miss out any new content, also any new LROC content like charging tests and more. Thanks to all my supporters out there who help me keep this channel running. Every little donation counts and I'm really grateful if you donate to me. And if you consider to do so, you will find a PayPal link down in the video description where you can give me a small donation if you think my videos were so helpful that it is worth it. And then I hope I see you in the next video and until then stay full of energy.